Hello everyone. This time around, I want to talk about the notion of disavowing accounts. In particular, I, I want to talk about online accounts. Uh, say somebody signs up on a website, gives your email address, and the site doesn't do any verification steps, and now your email address is associated with somebody else's account on some other website. Now, this actually happened to me once with Gmail, uh, or a, a Google account. Uh, I got a notice from Google about uh, resetting uh, the password for a Google account. Now, this particular Google account was, one, not in my name, and two, it wasn't the, the right username anyway for my Google account, which I actually have one. I've actually had a Google account since before they had Google accounts uh, on account of I got in on the Gmail uh, beta when you needed invites. So I was thinking, well, this is interesting. Uh, clearly, somebody's got the wrong email address attached to their account. How did they pull that off? Well, anyway, however they pulled it off, G Gmail or Google actually gives you the option to disavow the account. That is to say, this email address has nothing to do with that account. Uh, stop sending me uh, emails. They actually have a process for doing that. And I actually went through that process because this was a, a, an email address that was actually already associated with this uh, Google account. Now, I have no idea how they managed to pull that off. Maybe somebody... Uh, um, manage to uh, intercept email destined for me or something like that? I don't think so. Uh, I suspect they exploited some flaw in the uh, Google system at some point and they somehow got the, this email address associated with their account when it shouldn't have been. Now, it's certainly not doing them any good to associate my email address with their account. Uh, so uh, I don't have any sympathy for them for, for uh, whatever the consequences were. Anyway, I, I went through the disavowal process and it was quite simple. I just had to click a couple links and I was done. Uh, the, uh, then I never, I haven't got uh, any email related to that Google account since. And I believe their disavowal process also blocks you from associating that email address with that account in the future. So that's an actual good thing that Google has uh, in their, say, password reset emails. Now, I thought this was a great idea at the time, but I didn't think of it much further. And then today, I got a package left on my doorstep uh, from Amazon, which was actually not for me or anybody else living at the same address. Uh, it, was, it had the correct address on it, but some random name I didn't recognize, and it was supposed to go to uh, some place called uh, Nose Creek School. Well, it's pretty clear that my house isn't a school. Um, but I can't fault the courier for delivering it. The address on the box was my house. Uh, the postal code was wrong, but the address was my house. So I can't fault the courier for delivering it. And I can't fault Amazon for sending it to the wrong address, be, uh, the wrong address pre because presumably their customer gave the wrong address. Now, I do wonder how many mislaid packages Amazon has to deal with because the customer gave the wrong address uh, or moved and didn't update it or something like that. But that's a cost of doing business for any kind of a mail order thing. Somebody can give you the wrong address. Most of the time, a wrong address is going to be ret returned to sender uh, if it comes by regular mail or something like that. But a courier that's package left on the doorstep, that doesn't work. Uh, 
I may be able to call the courier company and say, look it, you delivered a package to me, it has my address on it, but it's misaddressed and it shouldn't be coming to me. And they may come and pick it up and return it to the sender. I had it happen actually a week or so ago where I got a similar package. I might have been addressed to the same person actually. Uh, which had the right address, wrong postal code, and address to Nose Creek School, but this one required a signature. That one I refused delivery of because it's not addressed to me. I don't want to deal with it, right? In fact, I suspect it was the same package this time, just resent. Um, so that leads me to to the question, why isn't there some way I can tell Amazon that somebody has the wrong, wrong address associated with their account? Well, I can think of a couple good reasons why you wouldn't want a postal address uh, to be possible to disavow, because that would allow anybody who wants to mess with you to disavow your postal address. Like you can't verify that the guy disavowing the address actually belongs to it. So I can see why that doesn't exist for postal mail as much as it would be nice if it did. It would allow me to tell Amazon, look it, this account should not be using this address. Uh, it just is wrong. It's not going to get to the person. Can you flag it so that they don't do this again? Now, for online accounts attached to an email address, the problem is less difficult. It's pretty easy to verify that the person who's trying to disavow an, the linkage with the email address actually has access to the email address. Uh, you can simply send them an email with a confirmation code or something in it and use that to confirm the disavowal. And that works quite well, same way you, you demonstrate that the uh, address is right uh, when someone signs up with it. Now, if you're doing a confirmation step for the sign up, then it's much less likely there's ever going to need to be a disavowal or something like that. But there are cases where it might make sense even then say you have a company with employee X signs up for an online account and that and they use their work email address. Now, whether that's a smart idea or not in this day of easy to obtain uh, free email addresses, well, that's, that's a, a question for, uh, for another time or other people to answer. But so it does happen. And now, now that now employee X leaves the company for whatever reason, but their account is still associated with that email address, that work email. Now, you're the mail server operator, and uh, or you're, uh, you're getting the emails for that person forward to you because you're their replacement or something like that. And then they go and try to retrieve the login for their account, their password or something, and you get the notice to their old email address. Well, under most systems, that address would have been confirmed, assuming a confirmation stage was there. But under most systems, that you that is as far as it goes. So every time that person says, email me the reset link or something like that, it's going to require you know, an email gets sent out and it's going to send the email out and you've got no way to turn those off. You have no way to tell the account um, uh, provider that the email address is invalid. Now, for the most part, this doesn't happen very often. And most of the time, you'll have a situation where the email address is invalid and it just bounces back as undeliverable. So then if you actually care about uh, whether these uh, email addresses are valid, you might actually deal with the bounce backs or something like that and, and do something with it sensibly. But what I've noticed is almost no online account providers have any sort of disavowal process where I can say, no, that account is not 
uh, supposed to be associated with this email address disassociate it. And I got to thinking, why is that the case? Well, mostly I think it's because the site developers don't think about that possibility. They, they'll think about con confirming email addresses because that's uh, a best practice and it's something that's often required uh, to avoid potential legal traps. What they don't think about is those same legal traps can also apply to those reset mails, those transactional messages. So with no way to disavow things, you can't actually turn off the tap as the consumer and that could be considered to be spam or and it could get the company, for instance, in trouble, uh, depending on the particular legal regime where they're located. It occurs to me that this sort of process should be a standard thing in all systems that provide online accounts associated with email addresses. It's, it's, uh, it's not really any more difficult to do than the conf confirmation emails in the first place. And you could easily track the accounts and which, ad, which email addresses have disavowed the account and require some extra confirmation steps before the email address can be used again or something like that. Uh, or you mark the email address as invalid and then require the account operator, assuming they can gain access, to as associate another email address before they can do anything. It's not that difficult to do that sort of thing. But it's interesting that nobody does it. Almost nobody. Clearly Google does. It's something that I think should be a standard thing on any, any uh, software package that runs, say, websites or whatever that does uh, email uh, addresses to verify accounts and so on. Now here's the thing. As much as I think it's a great idea, uh, the stuff I've built is just as much an offender as everything else. It never occurred to me that this would be a good idea to do. It never occurred to me that I should have a disavowal process for email addresses associated with accounts. And I kind of wonder why it never occurred to me because I have been through that process with Google, and it still never occurred to me that I should do that. Well, I guess, uh, yes, as I say, the uh, genius of invention is actually taking something that's obvious in hindsight and uh, actually doing it. Uh, a lot of these things are not actually obvious until it's occurred to you that it's a good idea. Uh, and in, in this case, it's only just occurred to me that this is a good idea. And I really do hope that uh, it does take off because there's more ways that, that a, a bad email address can be associated with an account than just uh, an employee leaving a company or something like that. It could be an administrative error on the server side. It could be uh, you know, a manually created account bypassing the... Uh, controls. You could have a legacy account that had a bad address attached to it. Uh, any number of things like that uh, which don't go through the verification process. And as a result, you can get some bad data. Quite frankly, as a site operator, I would very much prefer any email address associated with an account actually be correct because it gives me a better chance of contacting people. And as a site operator, I want to avoid annoying people who don't use my service currently, or who do use my service. I don't want to annoy existing customers either. It's easier to retain a user than get a new one. So I don't want to be sending bad emails to, uh, to existing users uh, for accounts that aren't theirs. Uh, so if it does happen, I want a way for them to tell me so I can make it stop. And I also don't want to annoy potential users of the system by sending bad emails to them repeatedly. So either way, having a way to disavow the account is, 
It just seems like the right thing to do. So I know that if I build a system with accounts in it now, if I'm building the software running it, I'm going to be adding that disavowal process to them so that I can actually uh, practice what I'm preaching here. Because I, uh, any situation, as a server operator, I want to avoid annoying the people that use my service. Uh, it's just common sense, which apparently is anything but common. And I'm hoping that other site operators, and particularly software builders, like for things like WordPress and other things like that, will also add this as a standard feature. Uh, it would be extremely useful uh, in a number of circumstances, and it gives you an extra protection against annoying others because then they can say, look it, you've got the wrong contact information. Just stop it. And also, as I noted, it may actually be required to comply with regulations and laws that have been coming online targeted at spam and unwanted uh, emails and that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm going to finish with uh, another uh, comment on, uh, on uh, disavowal, uh, and that is that the same processes that work for uh, email will also work for a telephone number. In particular, if it's a number that you're doing text messages to. So you can do the same thing there. And, and I think it's even more critical to do for a text messaging service than it is even for email. So if you're running one of those services, you should also make sure there's a way to disavow the, a phone number from an account uh, just because... Uh, someone may have the wrong phone number in there. And phone numbers do get reassigned. So if I do shut down uh, my, uh, my cell account for some reason, or I change my phone number, my old phone number will eventually go back into a pool of numbers that can be assigned to another user. And as a result, it's entirely likely that you will have phone numbers associated with accounts that no longer belong to the uh, the actual account holder. And that, apl that applies to the likes of Google and so on that also use uh, telephone numbers as a means of account retrieval. Uh, and, and as a result, uh, I think it's uh, a really good idea that there be a way to disavow that as well. I suspect Google has that sort of situation, so they have it for email. I suspect they have it for the telephone numbers as well. Uh, but anyway, anything where you can reasonably verify that the person contacting you is actually correctly associated with that contact address or number, whether it's an email address, phone number, or what have you, you should offer some way for the rightful uh, holder of that uh, contact point to disavow its linkage with any anything on your system. So here's hoping that in the future this gets even more common or even starts to get common. And as I said, for anything I design in the future, I'll certainly be doing that. Anyway, that's my ramble on the topic. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. And as always, if you've watched this long, thanks for watching.